All right. Let's shed some light. <laughs> yeah, no, we do. We need, there's a lot of light that needs to be shed. It took us a while to come together and it was destined to be. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Paige Elkington. I'm a writer and an actress and a comedian, and I'm also a skincare junkie, research junkie. I I love reading clinical papers. I love doing deep dives on skin ingredients and what's working and what's not. And that's what initially drew me to you. And that's why I'm so excited to talk about this ingredient today that everyone loves that has never seemed to work for me it always dried me out so why should we maybe be avoiding this ingredient <laughs> why is hyaluronic acid the worst possible choice as a moisturizer if you think about the skin most of the moisture is in the lower part of the skin deep down in the dermis the job of the surface of the skin is to keep that water from evaporating what hyaluronic acid does is it actually pokes holes in the surface of the skin, which makes that water evaporate more readily. So it's literally the worst thing you can do. It's poking holes through your skin barrier is what I'm gathering. That's right. The main element of the skin barrier is the outermost layer of skin called the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is a brick-like structure. You have cells that are the bricks, corneocytes, and in between the bricks, you have mortar. The mortar is comprised of lipids that hold these cells together. Now, hyaluronic acid disturbs this brick-like structure in two ways. It dysregulates this lipid structure. It throws a monkey wrench into this tightly organized lipid structure. So it becomes permissive. The other thing that hyaluronic acid does is it moves water around because it's a humectant, meaning it attracts water and holds water. Now it's absorbing water from inside the skin. Inside and the skin. Yeah. Inside the skin. And it can take water for wherever water is available. The corneocytes are not getting the water, so they shrivel, right? Okay. Now, right? Oh. Now you've got spaces between the corneocytes. Here on Educator, we like to be fact-based. The stuff about the lipids published the stuff about the water disruption published, the idea that the corneocytes are shrinking, it's a hypothesis. So if you're using hyaluronic acid long-term, does this get worse with use? Yeah, even in seven days, I'm gonna show you. This is a beautiful study that was done. Mm -hmm. They applied hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. And day one, day two, day seven, they measured at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the level of hyaluronic acid they were able to squeeze into the skin was the same because hyaluronic acid has a sneaky way of getting in. It will get in, right? What changed was the amount that got in right away. So day zero, like only this amount got in. Day uh, two, like this amount got in day seven, this amount got in, and it increased by a factor of 20. Mm -hmm. So the holes do get bigger. So back to what I was saying, when I was, when I would tell people that hyaluronic acid seemed to dry out my skin and my skin would become super sensitive when I was using it, can you combat this by putting it on damp skin? Does that help this problem? Or are we just still talking about a yeah. damaged skin barrier in the end. Exactly. So I love this. It's like an Instagram hack or whatever. You got to apply the hyaluronic acid on wet skin. Okay. So now you're shoving moisture from outside into the skin. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong. Right. You still got the holes. The holes are going away. Now okay. you just got water in there as well. So, okay. so it's like, yeah, your skin may feel hydrated, right? but it's not the right type of hydration. So it seems like it's got this, you know, kind of cult status maybe because of its temporary effects. Am I onto something in that statement? Absolutely. It yeah, it could be. It's like a temporary plumping effect. It's easy to achieve cult status. You just need to have something mysterious Mystery is tied to a temporary effect, right? So like you put it on wet skin, it's drawing moisture. My skin feels dewy for 
15 seconds or two minutes or 15 minutes. And then you hear someone say, well, you know, hyaluronic acid, it absorbs a thousand times its weight in water. Right? We've all heard and, it. And you're like, wow, right? A thousand times, right? Wow, it's so much powerful. Poor little glycerin only absorbs 30% of its weight in water. So I searched and searched to find the data to support the thousand times. Yeah. And there is no support. So wow. there's one paper that some guy wrote in the 1980s and 1990s. And he said one ml of hyaluronic acid can absorb six grams of water. So that's 6,000 times. Provided no data. Right. No data. And then everyone else just cited that paper. Yeah, like 6,000. I think the actual amount is 40, 50, 60%. It does absorb some water, but like fractionally more than oral glycerin. Okay. So my, my last question for you, because it seems like all the hype is just normal marketing hype, but why is every company putting it Besides what we just said, why is every company putting it into its formulations? Help me out. So why is it in everything? Because it's basically free. Like you can you can buy hyaluronic acid for nothing. Makes sense. So why not put it in? You as the consumer, you've heard a thousand times this weight. And oh, yeah. then you look at the label, oh, it's got good old hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. So So that's one reason. Then it's used sneakily by the companies that have peptides and there they're using tons of hyaluronic acid to get their little peptides, which are not so little into the skin because otherwise the pe peptides don't have a snowball chance in hell of getting into the skin. You load the skin up with hyaluronic acid, that peptide's getting in. You can actually get in a growth factor. 22,000 Daltons, you attach that growth factor to hyaluronic acid, it's not just going into the skin, it's going into the bloodstream. You can measure the amount of recombinant growth hormone in the blood, the liver topically attached to hyaluronic acid. That's so interesting because when I was trying to find a copper peptide product, I could not find a formulation of copper peptides that did not have hyaluronic acid in it. What's the opposite of a hack? Like a, a sneak? The companies are sneaking their products into your skin with hyaluronic acid. There has been no proper study of hyaluronic acid as a skin sensitizer. Not one. Zero. Zero studies. And what would a proper study be? Proper study would be, let's use hyaluronic acid for two months. Let's measure the skin barrier. Now let's add skin irritants that typically are prevented from getting into the skin. Let's add fragrance. Let's add an essential oil, right? Let's add those Lavender things. Oil. Now those things are racing into the skin, right? And then let's measure the sensitivity in the skin. No one's done that. Okay. If hyaluronic acid just poked holes in the skin, letting the antigens, antigen is a fancy word for sensitizer, letting those into the skin. But hyaluronic acid actually aggravates the sensitivity because you're taking hyaluronic acid and either you're using a very low molecular weight form, you're using the 900 Dalton form, or you're using the high molecular weight form. And by the way, no one tells you what molecular weight you're getting in your product. It never says 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 2 million. It doesn't say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to recap. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not done. So what, what happens with the short forms of, of hyaluronic acid? Those are actually actively pro-inflammatory. Those can wow. actually stimulate inflammation on their own. So you can take a situation that's aseptic, like no bacteria, right? You add small fragments of hyaluronic acid and they will hit those toll-like receptors and signal inflammation, 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 all on their very own. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So now to recap, it, it disrupts the skin barrier. You're poking holes in your barrier. So bad stuff is getting in. And now the water's getting out. 
yeah, the water's getting out, the bad stuff's getting in. It can be pro-inflammatory. It sounds like it, you know, there's no reason to use this ingredient and, and it should be avoided at all costs. Um, if, you, if you have intact skin. Now, if you have an open wound, right, then hyaluronic acid is actually good. It's anti-inflammatory. Okay. It actually forms a coating on the top of your skin. It keeps bad things out and it keeps the water in. If so you have an open wound. Open wound, yeah, because the skin is smart. If you have like one set of circumstances and you give an ingredient, it's not going to behave the same as if you have a completely different set of circumstances. Interesting. It's very interesting. I shouldn't love to make fun of celebrity dermatologists who have big uh, TikTok and YouTube followings, but I can resist. I'm not a completely enlightened person yet. And so <laughs> okay. one of them, I'm not going to use her name, but one of them. I know who you're talking about, I think already. Yeah, you do. But one of them did an episode where she was like, I hate hyaluronic acid. It's in everything. And, but. I'll give you the hack, use it on like wet skin. And wow. here's the other thing. It, it doesn't penetrate the skin. It doesn't penetrate the skin. Completely untrue. Even the largest hyaluronic acid, and I'm going to show like a chart from a study that was incredibly well done. They took every like different weight of hyaluronic acid and they measured how much gets into this layer of the skin, how much gets into that layer of the skin. The largest form of hyaluronic acid will get into the dermis, right? It's just how much smaller weights of hyaluronic acid, 70%, 80% will get, will get in with the larger weights. It's 20% will get in. So everything gets in, everything pokes holes. Okay, well, this is great. I think people are going to be really shocked to know this. I certainly was. I don't, I think you're maybe, you know, one of three people I know talking about this. So um, everyone who's watching this spread the word. And thank you, by the way, for getting me to do this in a new format. It's not that I'm any smarter than anyone else. There are millions of people who are smarter than me. The only difference is I have the time and take the time to actually do the research. Like for hyaluronic acid, to be honest, it took like four weeks, five weeks, all told, to read the papers, fit the pieces together. It's not like you can just sit down and read one paper and like, all right, I've got it. All right, it's not that the dermatologists are stupid. The dermatologists don't have time. And that's why Educator is so awesome. This was much more of like a damning report than your previous video. Like this is very clearly not um, a positive review of this ingredient. And I think that's really helpful because not everything's in, you know, like black and white terms, but this pretty much is pretty black and white. Like it's not a great ingredient. It's cheap. Oh. That's why it's in everything. It's a marketing kind of toy and yeah, no one should be using it. And I actually missed two points. They're really? pretty important, right? Okay. One point is actually when you look at whether your skin loses hyaluronic acid with aging, it doesn't. It doesn't? It doesn't. I've just been out here eating up these lies. And the other thing is hyaluronic acid is arranged in the skin in a super complex arrangement. So just the idea of just shoving stuff in, there's no way those pieces are going to be adopted and organized in the right fashion. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Very interesting. Wow. We've been lied to. We have, we have, we have been lied to. <laughs> we have. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm selfishely involved because I want to know the truth about. I have a list. You know how long my list is. I want to know about do, that. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna do it all. So gonna, everyone, stay tuned. We're gonna do it all. All right. All right. Love having you. Thank you so much. Bye. See you Bye. next time.